when it comes to tablets, you'll normally find me using this M1 iPad Pro or perhaps an iPad mini, but I've decided to shake things up and buy a Samsung tablet. And I'm really curious to see how it compares to an iPad. So in this video, I'll explain my reasonings for that. And I'm gonna talk briefly about the purchase experience. But first, here are my initial impressions of the tablet itself. This is a really nice looking device. Uh, the design is very reminiscent of the iPad, but I don't think that's a bad thing. And after all, these companies have all copied each other at various times. Uh, this is a great design for a tablet and the build quality and the finish of this Galaxy Tab S8 is every bit as premium as Apple's products. I think anyone who gets this device in their hands will be very happy. Now I should say that this is the smallest of the three S8 tablets at 11 inches. There's also the S8 Plus at 12.4 inches and then the absolutely massive S8 Ultra at 14.6 inches. And each of these is available in Wi-Fi or 5G variants. Now this S8 is the entry point Wi-Fi only model with eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. When I first picked this up and had a look at it, I was slightly confused at all of the antenna shielding strips on the case and the presence of a SIM card tray. And of course, there's also a removal tool in the box. And I did wonder for a moment if Samsung had sent me a 5G version by mistake. Uh, but of course, the SIM card tray doubles up as the SD card slot. Uh, the SIM card is on one side and that's blocked off in this tablet. Now, I've obviously been in the Apple ecosystem for far too long because I'd forgotten that you can extend your storage on Android devices with SD cards. And that is a brilliant idea because SD cards are ideal for storing files and application data. But I'm not a fan of the appearance of all of these shielding lines. I think my iPad Pro Wi-Fi model here is a much cleaner design. And I do wonder whether this is a cost-saving exercise and whether Samsung might be using the same chassis for both the Wi-Fi and the 5G models. There are a couple of key differences in the design of this chassis as compared to the iPad. And the obvious one, of course, is the aspect ratio. And I think the size of this screen works really well in landscape mode, but it does feel a little bit tall when I'm holding it portrait. And of course, I guess that's because I'm used to the iPad's aspect ratio. I don't mind it though, and I'm sure there are plenty of folks out there who will prefer this form factor. Uh, the front facing camera is in the middle of the top of the display if you have it in landscape mode. And I think that's much better than the iPad's approach where it's off to one side. I think it's probably more likely that you would do a video call on a tablet in landscape mode. The front facing 12 megapixel camera itself is nothing really to write home about, um, but I need to test that in more detail. I'm sure it's gonna be fine for video calling. On the rear of the device, we have two rear facing cameras. There's a wide 13 megapixel and an ultra wide six megapixel. Uh, again, the performance is nothing special, but I doubt anybody's gonna be looking to their Galaxy Tab for serious photography. Uh, it's fine for grabbing quick snaps or scanning documents. There's a rear flash and also the rear camera supports autofocus. For the video fans out there, you can shoot UHD 4K video at 30 frames per second. Next to the camera on the back of the tablet, we've got the S Pen, and this is included with all of these S8 tablets. Uh, yes, did you hear that, Apple? People actually don't want to pay another £120 to gain access to all the functionality of their expensive tablet. Uh, the S Pen attaches magnetically next to the camera, and it charges in this position. But you can also snap the S Pen to the side of the tablet, and uh, that's very useful too. But I like the location of the pen being on the back of the tablet. I'm constantly knocking my Apple Pencil off my iPad when I'm putting it in my bag or picking it up. And it seems like that's less likely to happen with this S Pen. Now the S Pen itself does more than just write. You can also use it for gestures and remote control. It's got this uh, button on the pen. And if you hold the button and do various gestures, you can interact with your device in different ways. And I haven't had a chance to play with this much, but I did try out the air gestures for media playback and volume control. And I think in most cases I wouldn't use it, but I can see it being useful if you were using your tablet for a presentation. The pen has a flat edge where it attaches to the tablet, just like the Apple Pencil, um, but the button is on the opposite side on the round edge. And I find this a little bit jarring. I'm used to holding the Apple Pencil in a certain way so that I can use the uh, touch area on the, the flat part of the pencil. Uh, when it comes to writing though, I think I prefer the S Pen. It feels really good on the screen. The tip is well damped, so it's a smoother experience than this pencil. 
I think the Apple Pencil is a lot like using a, a very hard pencil on a very smooth sheet of paper. Uh, whereas the S Pen feels more natural, like a pen on a notepad. And as a result, I find it easier to write with this one. But of course, these things are subjective and everyone will have a favorite. In my opinion, I'd rather write with the S Pen and I'd probably rather draw with the Apple Pencil. And since I don't really use these devices for drawing, I'm gonna say that I prefer the S Pen. But I'm not so keen on the slightly rubberized finish of S Pen and I wonder how that will stand up to the test of time. The speakers on this tablet are really very good and I'll delve into that a bit more in another video where I compare it with the iPad Air. Uh, but these sound excellent to me for a tablet of this size. Uh, and it looks like there are four speakers, there's uh, four grills certainly on each end of the device and that would indicate that you'll get stereo whether you're using the device in landscape or in portrait mode. Uh, but I can't find anything on Samsung's website to confirm that. Uh, there's no headphone jack, sadly, but we do get Bluetooth 5.2. And since wireless earbuds and headphones have gotten so cheap and ubiquitous, it's probably not that important for the average user. And that brings us then to the display. And this is really the thing that got me thinking about trying a Samsung tablet again in the first place. I saw some S7 tabs in a store and I thought the displays were excellent on all the models with buttery smooth scrolling and lovely colors. On the S8 Plus and the S8 Ultra, you get a super AMOLED display, but this standard S8 is a TFT. And I must admit that I managed to miss that in the specs when I ordered. So I was a little surprised when I switched it on and immediately saw it wasn't AMOLED. And the difference of course is visible in the black areas of the screen. Um, but I'll be honest, the disappointment didn't last long because this is a lovely display. It's got the same 16 million color depth as the AMOLED displays and I don't spend a lot of time watching HDR content anyway. And of course, I've got the iPad Pro if I want to do that. So I'm happy, but I think it is worth mentioning. It is a 120 Hertz panel though, so it does get that beautifully smooth scrolling as you swipe between the screens. But there's probably no point in me trying to demo that in this video as we're recording at 25 frames per second, uh, but it is really nice. In some ways, to me, it seems that it's actually a bit smoother than the ProMotion display in the iPad Pro, but that's just my initial perception and I need to do some more testing on that. Uh, when it comes to scrolling up and down web pages, I do think the iPad delivers the smoother experience, but that's probably more to do with differences between iPadOS and Android and less to do with the hardware. On the top of the device, we've got a power button with a built-in fingerprint reader, much like the iPad Air and the new iPad mini, and it works just as well as those devices do. And next to that, we've got uh, a volume control. Charging and external connectivity is available via a USB Type-C port. Uh, this one is USB 3.2 generation one. Uh, so that's what we used to call USB 3.0. So it means maximum bandwidth of five gigabits per second. So don't expect super fast external storage options, but I will test the port properly and I'll compare it to the iPad Air in another video. You don't get a charger in the box, but you can use any suitable USB charger. Uh, there is a cable included. When I plugged the tab into my usual 100 watt charger, it told me it was super fast charging and it went from 40% to 100% in about 40 minutes. Uh, the battery inside is 8,000 milliamp hours, which Samsung claim is good for 15 hours of video playback over Wi-Fi or 15 hours of Wi-Fi internet browsing. Uh, but I haven't had chance to test that yet. One more thing that I did notice is the temperature of the chip. If you hold the tab in landscape, it gets warm under your left hand. Uh, not uncomfortably hot or anything, but warm enough to spoil the experience. And it seemed to get to that temperature within seconds of switching it on. I haven't tried pushing it hard yet, so gamers might want to take note. I expect though, if you put a case on your tablet, the effect will be minimized. So my first impressions are really very good. And I'm going to talk about performance in a moment, but first of all, let me give you my impressions of the purchasing experience. I've bought a huge amount of Apple equipment, both personally and for my business over the past couple of decades. So I'm pretty familiar with their premium standards of packaging and that premium purchasing experience. When it comes to packaging, I think Samsung have done a really good job here. This is the box that the Galaxy Tab S8 comes in, a nice slim box, nice premium feel to it, uh, definitely appropriate for a premium tablet. Uh, the outer shipping carton though, um, not so much. 
Now Apple, they've designed their outer shipping carton so that the product box fits inside nice and snugly uh, and provides loads of protection for the product in shipping. Uh, whereas Samsung have the approach of taking their nice premium S8 box and putting it into the outer shipping carton, uh, sealing it up and sending it to you like that. I don't think that's a very premium experience. There are two other key factors behind my purchase decision, uh, a great trade-in deal and a free keyboard cover. The keyboard cover is advertised on Samsung's page as being included with all pre-orders. So when my box arrived with no keyboard cover in it, I was a little bit surprised. I decided to give Samsung a call and perhaps predictably got through to an overseas call center, talking to someone whose first language definitely wasn't English. Uh, during an almost 20 minute call where I had to repeat myself three times for everything I said, it became very obvious that the member of staff had no idea about any keyboard offer. So he said he would put me through to technical support and then what he actually did was dump me back out to the initial call menu. Uh, I don't really appreciate being hung up on, I don't think that represents good customer service. Anyway, I went and did some more research and I finally found the small print and a link to a site where you have to claim the keyboard cover upload a receipt and a photo of the serial number, despite the fact that I ordered the product from Samsung Direct. The serial number is on the order and surely they have my details. Why do I need to claim? And as it happens, their system said that my serial number wasn't even valid. Uh, it did let me proceed anyway, and then it told me it would take up to five working days to approve the claim and up to 45 working days to receive the keyboard cover. This initial purchase experience sets the tone for the whole relationship and this has not been a good experience. Now, in fairness, Samsung did approve my claim the same day, and hopefully they will ship the keyboard cover with similar urgency, but unfortunately it has meant that I've had to buy another cover to protect the tablet in the meantime, which means more expense for me and more environmental waste. The trade-in deal was really attractive. I've been offered £170 for my base model iPad mini 5, and I think that's probably more than I'd get on eBay, so since that's the iPad that this tablet is replacing, I decided to go for it. I got an email from Samsung saying that they were gonna deliver the trade-in return packaging to my billing address, uh, which in this case was different to the delivery address. But as it turns out, they've actually sent the packaging uh, with the tablet. And um, here it is. A nice protective plastic bag. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, so, Let's talk about performance. Uh, because the first thing that the Apple fanboys will say about the Samsung tablets is that they don't have the same performance of the A chips in the iPad, much less the M1 in the iPad Pro here. And yes, that is technically true. So let's play the game and do some simple Geekbench 5 scores. So my tab S8 scores 1215 for single core and 3249 for multi-core. And for comparison, my wife's iPad Air with the A14 Bionic chip clocked in at 1582 on single core and 4040 on multi-core. And the A15 and the M1 do score even higher. Uh, but this comes as no surprise whatsoever. I expected that the chip in this tablet would be behind Apple's chips. And that is actually part of the reason why I bought it. Because I want to test whether it actually matters in real world usage. Does it matter if it lags behind the iPad in benchmarks, providing that it delivers great performance for the tasks that a tablet like this is used for? I did try opening up one of my heavyweight spreadsheets uh, in Excel on this tablet. It's a spreadsheet that can really slow down on weaker ultrabooks, and it actually runs perfectly on this tablet, uh, smooth scrolling and rendering throughout. I can't fault the performance on this. Uh, obviously, I haven't had much time to play with it and I want to dig a little deeper. I want to try a few different apps out on this and an equivalent iPad to see whether there's actually a noticeable gap in performance in real world tasks. So if you want to see that content, you know what to do. And I hope you've enjoyed this brief look at the new Galaxy Tab S8 from the perspective of an iPad user like me. I've got a bit of a learning curve on my hands now getting used to Android again, but I'm really looking forward to it actually. On first impressions, Samsung at least have got the hardware right, and there is a lot going for these tablets. As always, thanks for your subs, your comments, your likes, even your dislikes, and your shares, and I'll see you soon for some more geekery.